is a uh, regularly called and convened Greer City Council meeting. We are meeting on um, May the 28th, 2024. Having uh, called the meeting to order, I would like to ask if you would to uh, stand with uh, me for the Pledge of Allegiance and then followed by an invocation for council. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we come before you uh, humbly today, thanking you for the many blessings that uh, you have bestowed upon us, uh, not the least of which is this calling to public service, and we thank you for the opportunity to serve this great city. We pray that we'll be mindful of the needs uh, of, of all of our citizens, uh, whether or not that be housing or food or uh, uh, whatever it might be, that we would be, we would be mindful of, uh, of all those things that affect our citizens as we consider the business that we are called here tonight. And we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate, to uh, consider uh, business, and to uh, consider a new budget. I pray, Lord, that you would give us insight and understanding, that, uh, that you would give us the vision that uh, we need to create uh, the city that is the light on the top of the hill. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Ms. Duncan, anybody to appear in uh, public forum this evening? No, sir. Council, with that then, let's uh, go to the minutes of the council meeting of May 14th, 2024. Uh, Mr. Bettis filled in on that evening for us. Any uh, items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Need a motion. Ah, we should. I'm out of practice. I'll entertain a... <laughs> I'll I'll make that. I'll, yeah, I'll <laughs> we'll maybe, make that motion. maybe we ought to turn it back over to Mr. Bettis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll need a motion. I got it. Made a motion. Motion and a second. Any items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Uh, this evening we have a uh, special recognition, and uh, I believe we are uh, joined by some folks. Um, the Riverside High School tennis team and their coach, Heather Gage. And so I am going to ask those that uh, are here uh, representing the um, Riverside High School boys tennis team and their coaches, uh, if they would, to join me up front, please. to the very team that they had lost to in the state finals the previous year 
on the comeback to 3-3, needing to win the tiebreakers doubles match to claim the title. Whereas only halfway through the championship deciding tiebreaker and up in the match, the skies opened and the rain came, forcing an unbelievable two-day delay. Whereas the Riverside High School boys team, their coaches, staff, parents, friends, and supporters rallied together and after a two-day delay, they won the 4A state championship. First boys tennis state title for Riverside High School since 1922. <laughs> Therefore, I read down Mayor of the City of Greer, along with the City Council, do hereby resolve that the members of the Riverside High School Boys 4A State Championship tennis team shall forever be recognized as the City of Greer champs, and that they will inspire every City of Greer resident to be the best version of themselves possible, and that they will always recognize the City of Greer as their home. Let's give these folks, all of them, a big round of applause. slip out if you want to. <laughs> y'all are all dressed up in this summer. If y'all want to leave, you can. So. <laughs> Who was the coach in 1922? Must have been 72. Must have been. <laughs> Council departmental reports are contained in your packet this evening. You will uh, have that information there if um, you have questions in regards to departmental reports uh, that can uh, be gotten from uh, department heads and or the city administrator. Uh, Ms. Susan Howell joins us now for a update on our financial information. Good evening, Mayor and Council give you a brief summary as of April the 30th, 2024, starting out with the general fund, the year-to-date revenue is $39,198,000. The total expenditures are $37,642,000, and that is 6% under budget. The cash balance in the general fund is $22,866,000. Moving on to the hospitality fund, the year-to-date revenue is $3,000,000. 78,000, 79,000, which is 7% over budget. And the expenditures for the hospitality fund are $5,051,000. And the cash balance as of April the 30th is $583,000. Finally, the stormwater fund, the year-to-date revenue is $1,606,000. The expenditures are $1,474,000. And the cash balance as of April the 30th for the stormwater fund was $3,129,000, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Council, floor is open for discussion. Questions, comments? The general fund numbers look to be reasonably tight. Um, you have any rationale for that? Um, as far as, you know, uh, revenue versus expenditures, they're, I don't remember River running quite that close. Yes, yes, that's why it looks this year. <laughs> I don't think there's any anything. We will. Um, we do get the business license money from the municipal association. We don't get that until June, and that's a huge piece of it. That so we should be getting a, a, a bigger, um, a higher number in revenue. Makes sense. We've pretty well gotten all our property tax money by now. Um, we get some that trickle in every month, but the majority of them, yes, we have received all that money. Okay. Others? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Let's move to the administrator's report. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> real quick, last Wednesday was International Building Safety Day, um, and we want to take the opportunity to uh, highlight our folks in building and development standards. 
Um, they are responsible for upholding the different building codes of Greer uh, for all of our businesses, build, government buildings, homes and facilities. Um, they really do a, a, a great job for the city to make sure that the structures that we're in are safe. And uh, I think it's important that we recognize them on, a, of course, a week after their, their day, but uh, thank them for all that they do. Uh, reminder that the next farmer's market will be next Tuesday and uh, the Moonlight Movie Series in City Park begins on Thursday the 6th of June. Um, there'll be uh, crafts and uh, pre-show fun, which starts at 7, and the movie starts at sundown. There'll be uh, concessions available for purchase, but um, see the city's website for a list of the movies and more details. And finally, council next Tuesday night, June 4th at 6 p.m., uh, we will be hosting a uh, council workshop to discuss the details of the budget at your pleasure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Again, inf additional information uh, is available from the administrator uh, as you might see fit. Council, let's move to appointments of uh, boards and commissions. Um, got a number before us this evening. Uh, we will um, look to um, some of our staff on some of these and um, fill whatever we can at this point in time. We have to uh, check on some of the others. The first one before us this evening is the Greenville Spartanburg International Airport Environs Planning Commission. Miles Nason has served on this uh, commission for a number of years. His term expires 6-30-2024. Do we have any information in regards to Mr. Nason's uh, ability to continue to serve or desire to, des to serve? Yes, sir. There's some information in the packet. Um, the airport is recommending that he continue to serve it if it's at your pleasure. From staff, it is reported that uh, he has agreed to uh, serve another term. Um, I'll entertain a motion that he be received. So moved. Second. And a second. Floor is open for any discussion or questions in that regard. Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Airwood. Yes. Mr. Booker. Yes. Mr. Hopper. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council has moved to the Board of Architectural Review. We have two members. This term's going to expire on 6 30, 2024. That would be Mr. Eddie Birch's term and Mr. Brandon Price's term. Um, new uh, uh, information or information in regards to uh, Board of Architectural uh, Review? Mr. Scotty? Mayor, I spoke to Mr. Birch uh, today and uh, he uh, is more than willing to continue to serve, so that'll serve as my, my uh, recommendation. Okay. Um, anything to add to Mr. Birch's nomination here as we... No, that? he expressed the same to us as well. All right. Comes as a nomination. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, motion and a second. Questions or comments in regards to Mr. Birch's uh, continued service on the Board of Architectural Review? Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Uh, Mr. Brandon Price's term expires 6-30-2024 as well. Um, he would like to continue to serve if it's at your will. From staff then, it's recommended Mr. Price's term be uh, renewed as well too on the Board of Architectural Review. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And a second? Second. Uh, floor is open for any questions or discussion in that regard? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, let's move to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We have, uh, appears to be four in regards to the Board of Zoning Appeals. We have District 2, which is Ms. Uh, Neeson's term, which expires in 6-30-2024. Uh, uh, District 4 would be uh, Mike Norris's term, which will expire at the same time. William Crosby, who represents District 5, expires uh, 6.30 of 2024. And Monica Reagan-Huey's term uh, expires 
at the same time, 2024. Those four come before you this evening. Um, Ms. Cotty, information in regards to those listed on um, our list uh, that uh, are approaching their um, the end of their term? Sure. Um, I spoke to Council Member Booker this morning, and he'd like to um, appoint Jeremiah McKee, a downtown business owner for District 2. Yes, Mayor. I talked to uh, Mr. Nielsen and thanked him for his opportunity and, and his service for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, if needed, I can do a biographical sketch, but uh, I'm recommending Jeremiah McKee, who is the grandson of uh, Mr. Gregory, Gregory's Boutique, who lives at 102 Mills Avenue in the Greentown community. I spoke with him today, and he loved the opportunity to serve on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Let's do these individually. This comes as a recommendation and as a um, as a nomination for uh, Mr. McKee to uh, begin a term after 6-30-2024 on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, I need a second. Second. Floor is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. District 4, Mike Norris? Um, he would like to continue to serve. Okay. Um, comes from staff as a recommendation that he would like to continue to serve as well. I, I will entertain a motion to receive that. I also spoke to Mr. Norris. He shared the same sentiment, so I'd like to nominate uh, Mike Norris to serve another term for, on BZA. Comes as a motion. Do I, do I hear a second? Second. Floor is open for discussion. Question? Comments? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Mr. Crosby serves District 5. Uh, Ms. Gotti? Yes, Mr. Crosby would like to serve again as well. Does this require that the person be in that district? I don't believe so. Because he's not in my district anymore. It's been shoved back. We will verify. We'll before, verify before that. Before he's reappointed. Okay. Yeah. All right. A couple of these really don't have a very good attendance record on the meetings. I know they only have t they have ten, and I know they have conflicts. But yeah, some of them only made half the meetings, and some made less than half the meetings. Point well made. You know, people have conflicts, but you know that's something I think should be taken into consideration when you accept the position. Of, so. How often does the Board of Zoning Appeals meet? Um, it depends. Last year they met 10 times. This year they have not met yet. Okay. So. <laughs> um, is it an issue finding a, um, a, a quorum? Has, has it been an issue with, with 10 meetings to find a quorum? Um, we had, I believe, two last year that we did not have quorum. Okay. That corner is no longer in five. Mm -hmm. Shove back to Miller Street. Miller Street. Yep. Okay. Tammy, just let me know that the only qualification is a city resident. However, we will verify, okay. in fact, that that is the case. I believe we've had that discussion before. It's just the, the recommendation comes from the district, not it does not have to reside in the that district. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Mr. Bettis, would you like to hold this over until you've? Well, uh, it sounds like we were leaning toward it being okay. We can always go back and change it, I guess. Uh, I would like to go ahead and clean this up and nominate William Crosby for another term. Comes as a nomination. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Floor is open for any discussion or comments or questions at this point. Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. <clears throat> Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. And the at-large position, Monica Reagan Hewley, uh, her term expires 6-30-2024. Um, in regards to that, 
a conversation um, with her? She did indicate this afternoon that she is interested in serving again, but I apologize. I hadn't gotten that information to you, so it's up to you if you want to hold or go ahead. <laughs> uh, floor is open for a nomination of Ms. Huey. So moved. And a second? Second. Uh, floor is open for discuss discussion. You said she did want to serve again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Questions? On the members at large, are they just called in periodically, or are they supposed to be there for every meeting, or what's their? Yes, they're just appointed by, I believe, the mayor. Just an extra that, person right? to be at the meetings or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would, okay. would you let us know if you have issues mm -hmm. having a quorum yeah, at, yeah. at these meetings? Because I do see what she's talking about. Yes. There is some, yeah. there are I some gaps in attendance on this list. I certainly will. We had trouble the beginning of last year and then towards the end after we reached out and asked if people would be wishing to resign, they started to come to more meetings. So, but I will certainly keep you updated. Ms. Duncan, where are we, where are we at at this point? You have a motion and a second from Ms. Huey. Any further conversation in that regard? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Airwood? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, the last one before us this evening is the Planning Commission. That's District 1. Uh, John Holland's term expires in 6-30-2024. Um, you had a chance to talk to Mr. Holland, Mr. Airwood? Yes. Um, I, I've spoken, uh, I've been speaking to John uh, about a, a matter. He's not going to be returning uh, to the Planning Commission. Uh, he, he has done us a fantastic job, and he has served as the chairman for the last, I don't know how long, but he's, he does real well at, at managing the meetings um, and getting the city's message out. But he um, was chosen or asked to put his name in for the Greenville County Planning Commission. And they do things a little differently, and he had to go for interviews and things like that. And, and he has accepted that. So he's going to, he'll still be serving us, but, but th through the county. So uh, I have not found someone yet. Um, and he'll, he'll be a, a difficult one to replace, but we'll, we'll get somebody. Good. Um, with that, then, I would ask that you and staff um, bring me information um, that we can uh, certainly recognize appropriately his service in time, okay? Um, I'd like to do that and uh, we'll figure out what the most appropriate way is, but uh, if y'all will provide me that information, uh, we, will, we will acknowledge his service to the city. Uh, as you mentioned, he has, has been a good member of that, of that commission and served admirably as, as um, the commissioner. Um, that comes as um, comes as a um, recommendation. Do I hear a second? No. We don't need to take any uh, action. Not, no action. Yeah, oh, there's no action on that. That's right. Excuse me. He is, he's leaving. So no action on that one. We'll wait on uh, Mr. Airwood. Uh, with that then, we will move to new business. I have a bid summary for uh, the Needmore Recreation Center flooring replacement. Mr. Mayor and Council, I would ask that this uh, particular item be held over uh, so the, the bidder can um, work through some licensing issues. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. With that, then, let's move to the second item before us this evening, which is the first and final reading of Resolution 18-2024. This is a resolution of the City of Greer approving an intergovernmental agreement between Greenville County Sheriff's Office and the City of Greer Police Department. Chief joins us for that discussion. Good, good evening, uh, <clears throat> Mayor and Council. Appreciate uh, your, your time tonight. Uh, bring forth to you a request on behalf of the police department to enter into a intergovernmental agreement with the Greenville County Sheriff's Office 
for the purposes of providing police services to the Mitsubishi polyester plant property on Hood Road here in the Greer community. Um, so as you are well aware, Mitsubishi Polyester has been a significant part of our Greer community. Uh, they partnered with us in many different ways over the years. Uh, we've had a public safety presence on that property with our fire service for many, many years. <coughs> the parking lot that belongs to the, um, it's an overflow employee parking lot across the street from the plant is in the city and has been for many years. We've responded to calls at that location However, the plant proper parcels where the plant actually is positioned, and then there's a larger piece of wooded property uh, that would be west of the plant is not in the city. Uh, the city of Greer does surround the entire plant. And um, so with that, we wanted to find a way to continue our partnership and, and actually evolve that partnership with Mitsubishi Polyester and offer that we can, uh, with this agreement through the Sheriff's Office, it would allow the Greer PD to respond to calls for service on the property where the plant is located. So this, this would not remove jurisdiction from the Sheriff's Office, it would just offer concurrent jurisdiction where we would also be able to respond. We do believe that um, our response time would, would be greatly enhanced for them and uh, as again, they, they really are a part of our community and have been for a long time. And I just think it's the, the best for continuity of service for us, as well as uh, a better service for them or a faster service. Uh, we recommend that we enter into this agreement. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Um, this comes as a, as a resolution. Uh, there will be action required on that. Uh, floor is open for uh, uh, questions or discussions with the chief. Chief Amby, did how did this come about? I guess is what did they request this? Was this so we we uh, we've been dealing with traffic concerns for uh, out there on that road. Uh, they've worked with us in conjunction with trying to reduce some of the trucking. Uh, issues that are clogging up the road. It's preventing their employees from accessing, you know, getting to work on time, being able to go away for their lunch break and returning on time. So we've worked through a lot of that with them and we find ourselves literally in a tight partnership with them continuously. Um, and, and additionally, I think there might be a future opportunity uh, for us with our uh, possible future training center uh, to partner with them uh, in, another, in another way in the near future. Others. So uh, there is no compensation when we answer a county call here. That's correct. It just just as additional information, we've had we've entered into the similar type uh, agreements with Greenville Sheriff's Office. Uh, I believe it's uh, Brook Brook Brookwood Drive, right off of Wade Hampton. Part of that neighborhood is in the city part of it's not but again for continuity of service we we entered into agreement to allow us to have police jurisdiction in that neighborhood we did the same thing in Hampton Ridge subdivision on red shirt court I believe it is uh, there's a whole nother story how that happened but part of that subdivision didn't get included into the city and I think we had another similar situation back when Victor um, the Victor Mill property, you know, there was a section that was in the city and part was not. So we've done these things in the past. It's not something that's out of practice. We have looked at the calls for service volume that could, that's definitely consideration for workload. And, uh, so over a three year period, we looked at how many times the sheriff's office responded to that. And it was a minimal amount. I think I have 13 or 14 calls for service over three years. Mitsubishi? Correct. Does, does the county respond to any city lim, uh, Greer City Limits calls initially for us? At that specific location? Anywhere in the county, do, are they first responder for us? They, they have jurisdiction, so they have what's called concurrent jurisdiction. So anything that's in Greenville County, it doesn't matter if it's in a city or not, they absolutely have jurisdiction. But I will say that 
the way law enforcement works, we generally push those calls off to whoever has primary jurisdiction. We want to have less calls <laughs> rather than more. Yeah. So they're generally not responding to calls within the city limits. Absolutely, that's correct, yes. Yep. For the purpose of action tonight, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And a second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Questions? The, is the 911 forwarded to our call center? So if, if, uh, if we were able to secure the agreement and enter into it, yes, we would send that information to E911 and they would, uh, they would repopulate the, the CAD system. Yes. Others? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? No. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. First reading of ordinance number 23-2024. This is an ordinance authorizing the lease of certain property in the city of Greer in a memorandum of understanding between the city of Greer and Greer Relief and Resources Agency Incorporated. Mr. Merriman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you are aware, um, Greer Relief is now in their new facility and our facility over at Berry Avenue. Um, as such, they are leasing the space from the city. Uh, this is both the ordinance that would um, recognize the lease between the city and Greer Relief and the concurrent mem memorandum of understanding, which outlines the terms further uh, for the city. But this is not dissimilar to um, the, uh, the previous lease in as much as the difference in this particular case is we, have, we are ceasing the budgetary appropriation uh, that we had in the past with Greer Relief. So this is a uh, minimal dollar amount per year. It's a 30-year term with five years renewal um, automatically. For the purpose of further discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So motion. Second. And a second. Floor is open for discussion. It really turned out nice. Yeah, I, I think they're, Carolina and all of them, I think they're really happy with where they're at. Makes a big difference in their in their location inside very nice Greer relief will be responsible for upkeep yes sir except maybe the roof something like that yeah those those major items you know the shell type things and you know part of the memorandum of understanding um, ensures that they are responsible for the appropriate capital fundraising initiatives to maintain the, the facility uh, furniture fixtures etc do they are they required to carry um, liability? They are, and they have to list the city's additional insured, and, and also, um, I guess it would coverage for their property. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have anybody that checks on that on like an annual basis, or to ensure that they are doing that? Just to make sure that that policy stays in place. We will make sure that that happens moving forward. Thank yes, you. sir. Others? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council has moved the fourth item tonight, the first reading of ordinance number 24-24. This is an ordinance authorizing the lease of certain property in the city of Greer between the city of Greer and White Wine and Butter Catering, LLC. Mr. Watson, Assistant Director for Parks, Tourism and Recreation joins us this evening. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Members of Council, we obtained proposals a couple months ago from interested parties for restaurant services at Greer Golf. We have one proposal submitted from White Wine and Butter Catering. Uh, staff reviewed the information in their proposal, found that they're a highly regarded dining establishment in downtown Greer, and we feel that their vision for food and beverage services at Greer Golf illustrate their commitment to success. Um, contract uh, was reviewed and actually created by city staff and reviewed by our city attorney, um, and our recommendation is to move forward with awarding the contract to White Wine and Butter. 
Comes as a recommendation from uh, staff. I'll, for the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion that we receive. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay. Okay. Floor is open for discussion. Fred, um, will they have a menu for like Sunday lunch? You know, at one point there was a lot of folks coming out for lunch to the golf course. Do they, are they going to have that as well? So the, we're asking them to be open when the golf course is open. Um, and when they are open, we're asking them to have a golfer's menu, which is sort of cold sandwiches, uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, those type items. And then outside of the golfer's menu, they have the liberty to offer whatever it is that they'd like to. So I'm sure um, what we've heard from them is that they want to offer what customers want. Um, and when they open and get that feedback, I'm sure they'll sort of tailor that to what they're hearing from the customers. I'm really excited about this. I think uh, you guys have done a great job of making the golf course a golf destination over the last couple of years. It's going to be a dining destination just by the nature of Jeff Mike and what he's already done in Greer and elsewhere, not just in the upstate, but in the state. So I'm very excited about this. This is great. Totally agree. How are they going to manage the, the kind of catering aspect versus just the average golfer that's coming out do they have kind of a plan to take care of them um menu wise i mean they'll have the golfers menu um and we've you know we've with them having to be open when the golf course is open we're making sure that people that come on the site have a restaurant to sit down and eat with however they handle handle their outside catering um sort of up to them as long as they're keeping the restaurant open to golfers and open to patrons that want to come and eat there i guess i maybe i when I said catering, I guess I was really thinking about like kind of events that are going to be hosted out there and just kind of keeping those, the events separate from just the ongoing golfers that are just, you know, looking to grab a drink at the turn or a sandwich or something like that. Okay, I got you. So um, the contract does state that the, if there are concurring events while golf is on, going on, that they still have to keep open either like a service window or they can serve out of the cabana to, to the golfers while there's a private rental going on inside. So if we're open, they have to be able to serve golfers. And, um, you know, if, if we have private rental, that's something we'd like to market using the cabana space and also the dining room. Um, and we hope, you know, the more people out there, the better. But they will have to stay open to at least serve golfers or people on the property in one capacity or another, regardless of the events that's going on. So speaking of marketing, how is that going to be handled? I mean, I, will we take a portion of, of the marketing in terms of the availability of the, the resources of the, of the course and events and different things like that while they also do some of, some of the marketing for just their services as well. How's that gonna, how's that gonna work? Uh, so if approved, we have a marketing team that we pay separately for the golf course. We'll get our marketing team with the restaurant's marketing team, and then everything will be one consistent message going out. But we will cross market each other as far as menus or specials or rentals of the, of the spaces that we have and the pricing options. All that will come together and look like one consistent message, whether it's coming out of the Greer Golf social media or whether it's coming out of White Wine and Butter. Do we anticipate it being ta or a table service in the dining room? I believe so. Um, that would sort of be an operational item for them, but the conversations we've had le lead us to believe that that's the type of atmosphere they'd like to offer. So is there any food available out there right now? We have vending machines, but there's no food available because the, the clubhouse is still under construction. I've had some complaints about that. That there's no food. <laughs> Be happy to take them. Uh, Was that the only restaurant that applied? Yes, ma'am. We um we had sort. It was not a mandatory pre-proposal meeting, but we offered a, a time if for interested parties to come by, and there were three or four restaurants that showed up to that pre-proposal meeting, but only one submitted a proposal by the deadline. Well, that's a good restaurant anyway. <coughs> yep. yep, we're excited. Is Chef Mike still the owner? Uh, he, that's who we've dealt with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he seems to do a good job. I've been to several events that he's hosted and he seems to really take care of people and have a good product and seems to keep people happy with his, with his food and service. So he has a background in, um, in a golf setting also, which is appealing to us. So it won't be the first time that, you know, that he and his staff have worked in that atmosphere and, and been in a golf setting. Others comments. 
So the the income from this will, from us will be the rent and what else? That's it. They'll pay us monthly rent, um, and then the cabana rental, which is where the pool used to be, um, that will be staffed and organized and taken by them, although we set the pricing, and then we'll receive 70% of all of the rentals from the, from the cabana also. Do you have a, a, an anticipated start date on this? I would expect 60 to 90 days after second reading if approved. Others, plus business license, hospitality tax, all that as well. They'll be collecting and submitting, correct? Oh, sure. Yep, absolutely. Just like any other restaurant anywhere in the city would. Yes, sir. Do you anticipate they'll uh, seek a um, alcohol license? Yes, sir. I do. That's part of the 90-day process. Uh, they may be able to do some things to get over and uh, get open in other capacities before then. Um, but yeah, the, I think that's about the, the time period for the, the ABL. Comments? This is a little off subject, but insurance, you know, there's a big problem with insurance and alcohol right now. Uh, I hope that's not a problem. I do too. <laughs> um, it hasn't came up uh, in any of our conversations with them, but you know we you keep hearing about other establishments closing down because of that. So um, they haven't expressed any any reservations about being able to purchase it for that location. First reading of ordinance twenty twenty four. Further comments? Questions? Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danham? Yes. Thank you, sir. Council, last item before us this evening is the first reading of ordinance number 25-2024. This is the City of Greer Budget Ordinance Fiscal Year 2024-2025. This is an ordinance relating to the fiscal affairs of the City of Greer, South Carolina, making appropriations therefore, levying taxes, and to provide for an effective date. Uh, with that, um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Merriman. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you. Um, <clears throat> per, um, in front of you is the line item budget uh, that is the general fund and then all uh, other funds uh, in, the, in the other packet. Um, I have emailed you last week the dashboard overview of the budget. And as I mentioned in the administrator's report, um, we have or will be scheduling formally um, for next Tuesday a workshop uh, which is obviously a time that you can uh, ask us any questions related to the budget. But as an overview here tonight for first reading, by way of reminder, what you're gonna see is a uh, fund 11, our general fund is a $51,689,039 fund, which is a um, overall increase um, of $2,101,000 over the prior year budget. Um, we are recommending <clears throat> that the millage rate be set at 113 mills with the appropriate operating millage, infrastructure paving um, millage um, included. Uh, what you're seeing is a bulk of this particular budget is an increase in personnel costs uh, due to in insurance premiums, adjusting salaries accordingly. We have in this budget a recommended 3% cost of living adjustment along with a 1% merit increase. This on top of the 1.5% uh, that this council was uh, gracious enough to uh, grant in, uh, for this fiscal year. Um, that we're currently in. Uh, we've added four additional employees in this, uh, two grant-funded SRO position, um, an athletics assistant in parks, recreation, tourism, and then a position in fleets dedicated to uh, installing equipment and technology in our public safety vehicles. Um, obviously, you, will, you are seeing an increase in the millage that 
reflects the uh, 2024 Series A and 2024 Series B bonds that were passed by council in uh, March of this year. Um, Mr. Mayor, I can answer any questions. Staff is here to answer any questions pursuant uh, to first reading of the budget. Um, but obviously, you're going to need time to digest the line item uh, expenditures that we have provided for you in advance of Tuesday night's workshop. Thank you, sir. With that, uh, Council, for the purpose of discussion or at least further discussion this evening with uh, the information that has been provided, uh, let's go ahead and uh, entertain a motion to receive and a second. A motion to receive. So moved. And a second. Second. Floor is open uh, for discussion. This is um, a question that the staff can provide answers uh, at a workshop. But, uh, and, and I mentioned this uh, to you earlier, Mr. Mayorman, but and I had spoken to David about it, but there's two funds that carries a pretty hefty um, balance. Uh, that is unencumbered. Uh, that's um, the 2% hospitality number and then the stormwater number. Uh, what I need to know is how much uh, is available or unencumbered out of those two funds because dollars from those funds can be applied to construction projects. And I don't see anybody here from engineering or stormwater. Uh, I, I know that we have a, a, a project that we have to do. Um, but then the next thing I keep hearing is that we've got all these projects planned. And I've heard that for a very long time. And my opinion about that is um, I, I think it's too late to try to trump those projects uh, in front of what I'm asking to do with those dollars since they haven't been, apparently they weren't important enough to you know, get them down and get preparations made. So if Tuesday I could have that information, that would be wonderful. And then the, the other item is, is just a way of thinking. Um, if, and I, and I know that, that, that that staff uh, has gone through and you know cut and cut and cut, and and I I would like for um, department heads, hopefully they'll all get the message because they're not all here. But um, in their preliminary budgets, they got things taken out. I what they need to be able to tell me is I, I want to know the why. Um, why have, why were you asking this? Why were you asking for these dollars? And then how, how, how is it going to impact us if, if you don't get them? But, um, you know, if, if you're, if you're asking for something just because, be honest and let, let me know, but we need to be asking ourselves during this time, especially why are we asking for certain things? And then how are we using this money and does it meet what we're trying to do? Um, yes, sir. That, that's my message. Yes, sir. Others. Mr. Mayor, I would anticipate next Tuesday is when we'll have a more expanded discussion around impact fees and finding the right mix from a philosophical standpoint and just the best approach from a revenue standpoint to do everything we're trying to do. Is yes, that... sir. Yes, sir. Does this revenue include impact fees? This does not include, this does not assume impact fees.
Now, the purpose of this tonight is just to say anything we would like to have checked out further or to ask a question about the... This is first reading of your budget, Ms. Albert, so what, anything's anything. fair game. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Susan is here to answer every question that you've got in okay. the deepest of details. All right, okay. And, and you know, I may be a little off on some of this, but I, I guess one thing that caught my mind um, was the council budget. <laughs> And looking at it, I saw that it increased from the actual 23-21 by 75,000. And so, you know, I'm kind of wondering about why that big 75,000. Where's your money? Where's your money? Huh? Where's your money? That's what you thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might be missing out on something. <laughs> And, and then, you know, so overboard for the total, it actually came out like a hundred, um, uh, well, not quite a hundred thousand, but oh yeah, 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 it did. It came out almost a hundred thousand over for the total. If, so just kind of wondering, you know, what, what was figured into those council and I'm, how those figures were incorporated. Dave, was a salary? Yeah. Now, the salary was the same as last year. I mean, right. It didn't take effect until this this year. Is that this year? Oh, okay. But, yeah, after the yeah, election. Yeah, but we're that was the 23-24 budget, right? It would have... It would have it would have, would have been assumed partially in the 23-24. It started 24. in January of 24, That's right. correct? That's right. Yeah, okay. And so then we're looking at 24 to 25, so we're looking at the next one. So I, I was just wondering, you know, uh, about that... 75,000 and overall 100,000. I can, I can tell you where part of that is coming from um, as well too. Um, one, of, one of the things that, that I'm finding that as we continue to grow, um, some of our dues, particularly the municipal association, some of the associations that we belong to, um, some of the conferences that I attend and others are the, the, the cost is based on the size of the municipality and so we have we have moved in some regards um, to a higher level of dues than we may have been over the last several years I know particularly as as we as we have gotten to you know the 40 and, and, and 50 thousand range as we you know as we look at that um, we've we've seen some increase in that for organizations that the city participates in and that I participate in uh, as well as uh, a presence that uh, I know that that there was one conference that uh, the, that the city participated in uh, that is an international conference that uh, that we try and keep in our budget, uh, but I know there was a, there was there were some extra costs in that as well too that we'll want to continue to to cover. So some of that is incidental to um, things that the city is doing through associations or that um, I am doing representing the city um, in in terms of organizations and um, and um, not as many trips as, as maybe in the past but uh, organizations as as well now a lot of that uh, and the bulk of it does come out of mine but there are there are some of those that the city actually signs up for and so that's where that some of that obviously not fifty thousand dollars worth but some of that may be in that number as well too yeah and one thing I just wanted a clarification on was the parking services. What is that? So, as we build a new as we build a new garage, as we have a garage, uh, we we've actually put to get, put a line item in to allow for the uh, ex both revenue receiving and expenditures related specifically to parking, as it will be a uh, uh, kind of a, a capital fund or a um, enterprise fund. What are we anticipating on revenue for 
you know, connected to construction and, and projects and different things like that, I I've been kind of looking at the building and development standards reports that have been coming out, and it, it looks like you know, they've been trending off in the last, um, last year, and then it looks like that trend is going to continue to stay flat this year. And so there, there obviously won't be, it doesn't like as much activity. I mean, we even talked about that with BZA. They haven't even had a meeting this year. And I think the Planning Commission has reviewed a lot less cases. Um, I mean, it's been, you know, only eight through April. And I, I don't know, it, it doesn't seem like we're annexing as much property and there's not as much velocity on <coughs> development. What are we doing to kind of absorb the, the slowing or? Well, I think part of this year's budget demonstrates that that slowing in um, a decrease in revenue in uh, permits in particular. Um, so that's effectively being absorbed to some degree by um, how tight this budget is this fiscal year. I will say that moving forward and having discussions with uh, the development community, <clears throat> they are kind of pausing, but I, the demand is still there. So when other national economic indicators, I think, loosen up a little bit, we should see an increase in activity in this area. Um, some of the preliminary reports uh, that we've had come in specific to the impact fees is still showing uh, a substantial uh, predictive um, number of houses that uh, we anticipate moving in and around Greer. So uh, while it was slow this year, I don't think that um, it's going to be like that forever. So we're just absorbing it this year through cuts. Do we have any idea? I know we talked about the impact fee, and I know we'll talk more about that on Tuesday, but do we have any idea of how much that could potentially generate or, or how much we would be charging per unit or have we thought about anything? Some of, some of the estimates right now for, uh, for a single-family home <clears throat> are somewhere in that $5,000 per home range with 3000 little maybe 30, 3300 for multifamily per unit um, is what can reasonably be expected. Um, you know, we could anticipate over a, a 10 year period um, somewhere between 14 to $20 million in revenue, somewhere between two and three, maybe even more uh, annually in revenue from impact fees. Now, of course, um, these are just predictive numbers based on a number of calculations done by the consultants that do this. Um, but I think that I would, I would safely say that $3 million annually uh, based on their numbers is is right in that sweet spot. Under the line item uh, in general, the general government operations for uh, street lighting, is that the amount, is, is that the utility cost? Yes. And on the revenue side, have we had any further discussions with CPW about the fee? We have not. We really need to. I mean, we're budgeting over $600,000 to pay for lights. That, that technically use much less current. Yeah, that's right. You know, we switched out to LED, so we don't <laughs> need to see the savings. Yes, sir. How many, I think I read in your letter, how many new positions have we approved in this, with this new budget? This budget that we have got a recommendation, recommending four new positions. Recreation assistant, parks and rec, two SRO positions that are grant funded, um, and a position in our fleet division that will uh, do uh, technology for our um, public safety vehicles. What was the ask? by departments. I think Jay was kind of asking a similar question a minute ago, just. From a position request standpoint in total numbers? Yes, sir. We had 51 total. And, and this includes the uh, tax increase of 14? This, inc th this budget includes the 14 minutes. Yeah. On the, uh, this is just a general operating question, but uh, with, with fleet services, how far, what is our intent with fleet services as far as um, maintenance and uh, j just the, 
the management of all of the equipment and, and uh, vehicles that we have as far as you know who's going to work on them I mean uh, are, are we still going to do simple things or do we see that ramping up uh, or, or have we even looked at that? no I think we have looked at that and and uh, we we see that ramping up obviously there's going to be limits to what makes the sen makes sense to have in-house versus what uh, we would contract out. Um, but the more that we can do in-house, and I think this particular fleet position represents that, while it's not uh, mechanical per se, we were paying a lot um, to source out the installation of lights and radios, et cetera, in there to bring that in-house, uh, we see would be a, a, a savings. And so that is just one example of uh, a continually growing and robust fleet service. Now, are we literally doing that as far as costing and cost savings uh, with other departments? And we've talked about this a lot before. It was the mechanization of some of the departments is very possible, which should, which should save on labor over time. Spend more on the equipment, and then you, you save on the on the labor because the technology is doing more for you. Are we are we in the process looking at that and asking for recommendations coming out of those departments? Is there anything that that they can do within the departments to? Sure, I can let uh, Mike or Katrina jump in as they see fit, but generally speaking, um, the department heads are tasked and, you know, by and large are just, you know, the, the type A type people that are always looking for better ways to do uh, services within their department. So to answer your question, yes, if there's a better, faster, smarter way of doing things, specifically in uh, your equipment heavy departments like public services, et cetera, um, they're always looking for that. But <clears throat> there's always going to be a marriage of of personnel and equipment. And, and so to divorce the two in as far as the city government goes is going to be will be hard pressed to do it. But to your point, yeah, if we can, if there's a machine that could, you know, do all things, we're going to try and figure out how to get that, but we're going to have to have somebody operate it. That's right. Yep. And, and I guess, and then maintain it. And that's the big, that's the part of the whole study, not just saying how we can do, but can we hire an operator who's a true operator? Mm -hmm. And it is, can we bring in this piece of equipment and how, you know, and the example I've used for you is with you is that we have a tractor in our inventory and it's probably used two or three months out of the year. Well, there's, there's new platforms out there that take the place of just a tractor to mow the, the shoulders that, that where we can change out the heads and that's, that's simplistic, but that's what sure. I'm, I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And, and one other thing, I was just curious on this general fund overview revenue, uh, the taxes, and uh, I guess are we anticipating an uh, increase of taxes of about four million. Is that am I reading that correctly? A little over four million. see where are you you are uh, let's see what page is it page two of 29 is that it general fund overview yeah it's about right yes that is inclusive of the millage increase yes ma'am Where does the where does the debt service for the new projects fall under these expenses? Is that facilities budget? They don't. They don't. I don't understand. The, the debt that we just issued is. I'm not um, it's a different debt arrangement that is held with separate funds. Holds nothing but the debt. Service 
So for so for revenue, the, the bonds, because I, I don't know if that I'm understanding that. We're, we get this amount of money, and it's not going into any particular fund. It's just held in an account until the debt service payment is due twice a year in the calendar year. So the revenue's not showing the an increased millage, is it? Yes, that is me. So we're showing increased millage in the revenue, but we're not showing expenditures. The expenditures are shown. Where are they? I just asked you if they were in there, and you said no. So, well, with the leaf vacuum. Right now it takes two people. Right. The one that's in the environment. Right. Well, and just to expand upon that thought is, can that piece of equipment do more than vacuum leaves? That's, so, that, that, that's where I, I, I want to go with that kind of thinking. looking at the first page Perhaps. summary <clears throat> no I'm looking at He's looking at the paper the summary that was handed out this evening so that entire number is what is it So with the increased millage, how much money are we taking in in this budget? Just that millage would be a total of, I'll tell you right here. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so. What's the value of a mill now? 238.982. So we're showing the same amount of money as a an expense in that general government budget. The 
because we don't collect it until in arrears? Is that why? We maybe get that in a breakdown in black and white next week. Sure, sure. See when, what goes when, it's where, a, when. It's a timing issue. Yeah, I realize that now. Yeah, that service is coming in uh, first, and then taxes come in. What do we have? Two. We have a thirty-year payment schedule. Yeah. yeah. And this, and, and so the debt or the the revenue comes in at a different time than the payment schedule. So this allows us that timing from a cash flow perspective to ensure that we're making those timely debt payments. But we get, we'll, we'll make sure that that's outlined clearly for you. So it makes that next full payment in 2025, right? Mm -hmm. Also, what would be nice to see is we talked about different revenue sources with the athletic facility and different things like that and the impact fees, you talked about those tonight. You, it would be great if we could kind of see a breakdown of different sources of revenue sure. that could present themselves in the future and allow us to back the millage uh, back down uh, closer to where it is now. Sure. I think it would it'd be good to see what that looks like too. Lot to digest. Others? I want to ask one more question. I would go back to this line of thinking we were going down a second ago. I was asking about um, the amount of positions that were requested versus the number that were approved. And I just, I know you said that I think it's because we you know, have ambitious department heads and they're looking to obviously grow and take on more responsibility. and. And, and serve at a higher level. I know we recently had a shift in policy with uh, flex time and different things like that. Is it possible that that is why the maybe there was an ask for more positions? Well, the no, sir. Um, the, the, the the flex time policy is still. I'm working through that, and and but that's secondary. More the the increase in in personnel is is various. Um, reasons why from department to department. Generally speaking, though, I think that we need to get our hands around uh, vacancies um, as much as anything before we really start adding personnel to the budget. Um, and, and that's as much as anything from my, per my perspective as the administrator, you know, we are seeking um, to provide a level of service and we budget a court to meet that level of service. But if we are not fully staffed, adding positions to the budget only increases the budget when we haven't filled those positions previously. So I think that's why this is very important in this particular budget as we look at our existing personnel costs, um, but also what are we going to do to recruit and retain in order to fill the positions that are currently vacant. And I think that needs to be um, as much as anything from a, from a, a management pr perspective um, a goal for this fiscal year is to fill vacancies. 
no sense in adding positions and inflating the budget. We can't fill the ones we've been budgeting for. <clears throat> Where have we been hovering from a vacancy standpoint through this budget year? Through this budget year, I would say we're averaging uh, conservatively 12 to 15 percent personnel vacancies conservatively. Do we look at how that stacks with other cities in our area? You know, I know we do, Mike runs those competitive numbers a lot of times on millage rates and different things like that. Do we stack how, where we are on vacancies as far as maybe where Greenville is right now or Spartanburg just to make sure there's not some time. I know there's, workforce is an issue for everybody, right? I get that. We asked um, the consultant that we were using for our personnel look and I asked that very question, Mr. Dennis, and they indicated that most municipalities and counties right now I went to the economic development meeting a few weeks ago and it's a statewide problem. That was the number one issue that was brought up repeatedly by every agency that was that was there. I mean, they just, they said that workforce is the number one challenge for, for industry and, and just em employers in general. Work for, workforce is always going to be that because it is your biggest expense and th this is, it ties in with the budget, but not directly. But I think we have to do things differently. Uh, and we have to go through our um, looking at our hiring process, um, how we select people and how people select us. Um, I think that, um, you know, and, and we all know this, you just, <coughs> You, you can never, if you start just competing on the paycheck, you don't win. And so we have to look at this from the ground up and we, a, a, a new way right now to do business. And that is um, recruit those people, bring them in like you do athletes. See if they're gonna be a good fit for your organization. If they're not, we don't need bodies filling positions because if you if you've got three open positions and all you're looking for is a and we put a body in there that body won't last too long and they're going to cost us money so um you know it's it, it's a tough environment but we've got to operate in it and, and we and we've been very the city has been very successful in being able to think through and find different ways to do things that's not normally done. And that's what we've got to do now. Um, not only, I, I think, I think our whole way we think, uh, the way we budget, the way we hire, all of that, we've, we've got to, we've got to question every bit of it. And as, as far as hiring and maintaining folks, um, that needs, I think, some work. And we'll work through it. I mean, it's uh, uh, that's just the way the economy is. And but if, but and and then we'll find out how we can survive or get through this period of time with managing employees. And then it'll change. And then we'll have to change with it. But if, if all we're trying, if all we do is the same thing, we won't have any, we'll still be in that 12 to 15% vacancy. Well, we've got to, you know, we have to do better if we expect to, we have to manage better if we expect to, to run better, so. Council, first reading of the budget, um, lots of good questions, comments. We've gotten uh, some feedback from staff, um, information to be provided by staff. Um, let 
this is uh, this is a lot to absorb. Obviously, uh, in 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 the time that we can allocate this evening, we have a workshop that'll be coming up. Uh, what additional questions, comments, discussion uh, might there be tonight that would uh, to help you um, focus in on something and or uh, require more information uh, for you to consider? Mr. Mayor, I'll, I've made no secret of my uh, dislike of the millage increase. I just can't help but believe that with with 19 percent inflation that we're going that we have gone through, and overall about two percent decrease in salary, Greenville County is pushing for a not a one cent tax. I don't want to mislabel it like they are. One percent sales tax, like Spartanburg mislabeled it and got theirs. That's a one percent tax, and of course the school district maxes out every year. This is this additional burden. I'd be interested to hear from my constituents if they mind paying more taxes and if they're getting their money's worth. That's what I'd like to hear. Valid. Others? Have we figured a household number for 100,000 assessed, or do we, we normally have a number as far as what, how that's connected to the millage increase? Specific to what would that burden be? Yeah, was, uh, you had that in the letter. Yeah, yeah the fourteen mills is uh, boils down to a fifty-six dollar annual increase per hundred, uh, which is four dollars and sixty-seven cents per month. That was for a hundred thousand dollar home of assessed, not market assessed value. Others. One thing that will help me, because now I'm a little more confused, was before I was under the impression that the millage increase would go towards more for the projects. But at first, he, he said that there wasn't any millage in the budget. But then now I'm confused. Is there or isn't there? So if we could clarify is the millage increase almost like that silo that we're, we were saying, referring to before going towards the project more or less and then? We'll make sure that's clarified at the workshop, but just, yes, sir, just philosophically speaking, it is siloed. Yeah. There's an accounting function that complicates things to, through no fault of the science of accounting, but that's kind of where the confusion lies. But the, the, the 14 mills is dedicated for debt service for the 30 years of the 2024 Series A and Bs. Okay. So we will make sure that that's clear Tuesday night. Okay. I don't want to mischaracterize that. Uh, fair enough. To fair enough. Constituents. So with that, Council, I... Uh, I think we are drawing nigh to uh, at least a decision. We have first reading uh, before us this evening of uh, the City of Greer budget ordinance for fiscal year 2425. Uh, this is the ordinance relating to the physical affairs of the City of Greer, South Carolina, making appropriations, therefore levying taxes and to provide for an effective date. While there is obviously some disagreement about um, how we've gotten to where we are and where we're going from here. Uh, I, I feel like there is probably some agreement as well. And um, we have to have a place to start. And uh, if it is a, a failed vote on the first reading, then we know that uh, we have not found the place that we need to, uh, to start this discussion in earnest. And uh, so um, before I call the question on the first reading of ordinance number 25-24, I'll uh, open the floor up for any discussion, questions, or comments anybody would like to make. Mr. Mayor, I'll just simply say I, that's what I see tonight as is just a place to start. I look forward to a 
more in-depth discussion next week and then a second reading as well. Um, Mr. Arrowwood, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bettis's comments, you know, certainly resonate with me. Um, and I think it's incumbent on us to make sure that anytime we even consider uh, something such as raising millage that we are making sure that we are uh, providing value. And, um, you know, there's certain conditions that I want to make sure we put in place that if we do go this route, um, that we're, we're doing the right thing over the long term as well as the short term as well. Others? If none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Booker? Yes. Mr. Hopper? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? No. Ms. Albert? Um, due to the fact that I voted against $100 million, uh, in the first place, with it, I wanted it downsized a little bit there. Uh, I'll vote no on the budget. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we have no other items before us this evening. We stand adjourned. <laughs>